I will speak with Professor Neil Ferguson, the director of the Abdul Latif Jamil Institute for Disease and Emergency Analytics, or JIDEA for short, on the current situation of the coronavirus outbreak. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Can you give us an update? So we have over 110,000 cases diagnosed worldwide, cases on every continent of the world. Clearly some epidemics seem further progressed than others. Particular concern at the moment from a European perspective is Italy. The case numbers are building up quite fast in most European countries. France is second. Across Asia, the Chinese epidemic seems to be in rapid decline. Uh, it remains to be seen whether those declines can be maintained once the very draconian restrictions on society are lifted. There appears to be some hopeful evidence that the epidemic is slowing in South Korea. We have limited information really what's happening in Japan and, and other Asian countries. I think at the moment the world is you know, grappling with what the, the relevant response should be though. Most countries outside China, Italy, Japan, Korea, are still very much in what you might call a contained phase. I mean, there is monitoring of cases in travellers to prevent cases coming into those countries, but increasing concern about local transmission in their countries. And can you give us an idea of the challenges that these countries are facing? So I think kind of fundamental decisions have to be made by countries as to whether they're going to follow what WHO is recommending and what the Chinese did, namely attempt to suppress all transmission, or alternatively try to mitigate, in some sense, control an epidemic, but short of completely um, stopping spread. And it's an important distinction because in the former case, effectively that's a strategy which, I mean, in theory, if it works, could could you know, largely prevent deaths from this infection, but would really have to be kept in place for 12 to 18 months until we have a vaccine available at scale. So that has enormous feasibility issues, and can, you actually, can any society really maintain those sort of controls for that long? Clearly has huge economic and social issues associated with it. I mean, the alternative is, in some sense, no easier. The idea of kind of mitigating an et epidemic which is though fundamentally allowed to run its course until basically it stops because it runs out of people and develops herd immunity. Not everybody in the population get infected. We'd estimate the best you could do though that half the population would get infected. You're still talking about an enormous epidemic in each country and even if we do our best to protect those most vulnerable, the elderly, people with pre-existing health conditions, still potentially a very high health burden, both in terms of deaths and in terms of demands on ho hospital and care, healthcare systems. So there are no easy options here. I mean, the next few months are going to see, almost regardless of, of which particular strategy is adopted, we'll see many countries in the world, if not all countries in the world, see kind of major dislocating social changes just as a result of the interventions which need to be put in place. Thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. It's a pleasure.